Hey, 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 guys, and welcome to another episode of WFM Tipsy Thursdays. I am your show host, the Contact Center Whisperer, also known as That WFM Girl. I am also the CEO and founder of Solid Rock Consulting. We are a workforce management consulting firm. This week, we have the amazing Jay Silva with us all the way over from Moby. Jay, thank you so, so much for being our guest on this week's episode. I'm super, super excited to have you. Thank you so much, Juanita. What a welcome. What a level of energy. I love it. Thanks so much for having me here. So I'm super excited to have you because you have such a wealth of uh, experience, not only in workforce management, but we're going to get into uh, some of your experience that you have. Uh, and so I'm super excited to under learn about your journey. But the, today's topic, what we're talking about is what are some of the key characteristics? And I think you are great to answer this question. What are some of the key characteristics that you need to be successful in workforce management? What are some of those transferable skills? One of the common questions I get asked all the time is like, hey, how did you end up in workforce management? Um, how do I become a successful workforce management person? So that's what we're answering today. And so I'm super, super excited to dig in. But before we do, I want you to tell me and the people that are watching um, a little bit more about yourself and tell me when you first discover and fell in love with workforce management. Well, thank you. So um, a little bit about me. I am a senior workforce optimization manager at Moby, an amazing company out of Minneapolis, uh, where we work in helping people live better and healthier and happier lives. So just a little shout out to Moby. Just such an amazing company. And I've, I've been here for about four years now. Uh, when it comes to my WFM journey, we're actually just talking offline about this, which is interesting. I place myself in WFM on purpose, right, through my career. But to answer your question directly, I think the first time that I experienced WFM was way, 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 way back in the early 2000s when I, I started a job at um, a BPO for Sony DirecTV, I mean, it was like those bays after bays of people, right? Um, and, and we knew that the folks that had the apparently most relaxed job, the folks that were out of production, were the folks behind the glass. They were looking at the numbers, looking at the schedules, doing all those things. And those were folks that had a little bit more objectivity in their talk. There was a little bit less noise and more directivity to them, which is a little bit of my personality. You know, I love to have fun and all of that, but when it comes to the job, let's focus on the shortest path to proper decision making. Uh, so that was like my first experience. And then through my career going into management consulting um, with uh, DeWolf Borg and, and Associates, another great company to work for, like I couldn't say better things about them because they really taught me what a sound operations of any business look like? What are the main components, right? So in workforce management, folks talk about the four R's. I had the fifth one for that, which is right having the right number of resources at the right place at the right time, skill with the right thing, but actually doing, executing the right skills, right? So holistically, you grab that whole thing. So uh, a management consultant in the way that I was and that I actually still am really is the perfect fit. If you already have that experience with WFM, standing things up, understanding what are the barriers that prevent people from achieving their goal. And WFM allows you to do that because we're plugged in into what kind of sales numbers we have, what kind of staffing we need for that. What are the variables like the capacity numbers? What can each individual do? And then a call center is really good and easy because everything is logged. From the moment you log into work to the moment you leave, every single thing is a dot. Being able to understand the reason why those dots are there, both on the individual level and the aggregate level, is what a really, really good professional in workforce management or workforce optimization is able to do. And furthermore, is having the ability to go from detail to high level, right? Seeing the trees, seeing the forest, and being able to communicate to every single audience or different type of audience within an organization. So long answer to that question, but holistically, that's what I think uh, made me fall in love and grow with it. 
I absolutely love that. You had a nugget drop there. I mean, you had so many nugget drops there, but the one that you said that is just resonating with me so deeply is the shortest path to decision making. Because so many times we get uh, paralysis by analysis, right? And so we kind of get stuck in, 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 and we got all these reports, we got all these, all this data and we still can't make a decision. It's like, what are our hours of operation needs to be? How many people do we need? How much should this, you know, what schedules do we need? What do we need? We, we're trying to make operational decisions around customer experience or around work, you know, employee experience and all these different decisions that a business operationally has to make. And they have so many times so much data at their fingertips to help them make those decisions, but it's almost like they're overwhelmed with the data. And so having that background in management consulting and marrying that with workforce management uh, helped you to really be able to help organizations get to that decision in a short time. So the short path to, or shortcuts to decision-making, I, I, that chef's kiss, that was so good. That was so good. Thank you. I, I want to add one, one little caveat to that. It's actually, that was a nugget that I sort of was writing it down this morning in preparation for a call because I was excited. Like you say, when you find a WFM professional that loves what they do and is able to be happy with what they do, you also, you know, you always want to help and learn and do all those things. So in that concept, it was the shortest path to the right decision making. Yes. It's not the shortest path to make that decision. It's like, do I have everybody in the room that needs to understand this data? Who needs to understand the detail? Who needs to understand the trees? Who needs to ask additional questions? Sometimes it's not the time to make a decision, it's the time to ask more questions, right? Oh, that's good. Create that as well. Yeah, that's really good. The, you know, who is this a time for this decision or am I still in fact finding mode? And you know, sometimes that's a that's a whole nother conversation. I was gonna go down a whole nother path. We'll be talking for forever, Jay. So you're trying to take me down another path. You're trying to take me down another path. I'ma stay focused. So the next question that I have for you. <laughs> The next question that I have for you is then, can you tell me what are some of the common myths, right, that you've seen over the course of your career, specifically working in um, management consulting operations and workforce management around workforce management or what it takes to be a good workforce management person? What's some of those myths that you may have um, encountered or heard? Great question. I think it's not a myth for me, but it's something that folks uh, sometimes get confused when they say, oh, just talk to workforce management. Oh, it's about schedule. Change the schedule here, move this thing here, right? So there is also that danger if you go into that career that you will get pigeonholed into all I know it's scheduling. Mm. Let's be honest, every single platform that is out there from 5.9 to Varen to Genesis to Nice, they all do scheduling. You put the inputs, it's going to come up. Is it the right schedule for you? Come on right here. This week. It's not about that, right? This is important. Come on. We used to do schedule in a, in a piece of paper, like get the grid and you get a schedule. Not that complicated. Um, but you get pigeonhole in that. That's a myth that you can fix operational problems with scheduling solutions and you cannot. Mm. You, you, mm. Like that one is like, to me, it's even more important. You don't get to fix operational issues with scheduling solutions. You can't. So that's a big myth. That's so good. And if I was not, if I wasn't tied down here because we had to do, I had to stay in frame, I would be running around this room right now, right? Like this, that is so good. You do not get to fix. I'm telling you, it's going to be some quotes that come out of here. Put this in the chat, y'all. This, you do not get to fix operational issues with a scheduling solution. Right. Like you don't you don't that, that's not the end all be all. Like I say this all the time, just because you bought QuickBooks, that does not make you an accountant. Right. That's if right. you don't have that financial uh, um, function inside of your organization, you having a QuickBooks solution does not solve for your cash flow problems, right? It doesn't solve for your lack of visibility into your financial situation inside of the organization. So you need to 
create a process around your financials, right? And cash management and all those different things. And then you leverage the technology QuickBooks to scale that function so that you can do it, you know, at a larger scale, more complexities, all the different automate some of the tasks that you're doing manually. Right. And so that's the point of leveraging the technology. And so I love that you said you, you don't get the luxury of saying, oh, just throw scheduling at it and then scroll, throw the solution at it and that will fix the thing, right? We need to really look at, do we have process around this and what are our operational outcomes that we're trying to solve for? Don't, you trying to take me in, okay? You trying to take me in, Jay. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey there, it's Juanita Coley here, and I want to personally invite you to book a WFM support call if you're currently transitioning into a new WFM solution or you're on the market for a new WFM solution. Trying to purchase a new WFM tool can be a daunting task because so many options that are out on the market. Workforce management is our niche niche skill set. Our superpower is, is being able to align that niche skill set with your CX, your customer experience and your employee experience goals. And so I want to talk to you to make sure that while you're transitioning into a new WFM solution or you're purchasing a new WFM solution, it does not impact your customer experience and your employee experience negatively. So if that is you, book a call and I'm excited to talk to you. See you soon. Bye. Last question I have for you. What are some tips, right? So we typically like to cover myths and tips of the topic. So we talked about a myth. You'll commonly get pigeonholed into uh, scheduling or workforce management is simply scheduling. Um, so I love that myth because I've heard that so many times from workforce management people as well as operations talking about workforce management, like, oh, just we just need to change the schedule or this is a shift bid issue. It's like, yeah, no, not really, you know. Yeah. Those are shouldn't even be your hours of operations based on when your customers are calling in, right? You really probably need to look at your hoops, but you need to do a schedule analysis and a cost analysis to be able to even determine what your hours of operations should be in the first place. But I digress. Yeah. So right. myths we've covered, but tips, what is a tip that you can give to someone that is looking to move into workforce? They're new in their WFM career um, that would help them to excel in their career or be able to help in the organization be a more value add? What would be one of those tips that you would give to them? My main tip to everybody that works with me for me or that I have any, you know, responsibility in guiding them, um, stay curious, right? Mm -hmm. Understand the details before you try to make an assertion about something and stay flexible because the winds change. You might, you know what I mean? Like what your numbers are showing you, it's not necessarily the direction the company is going. So try to understand that as well before you start wasting time doing, you know, requests for information and all of these things. If we're not going after that, why? So really try to stay close to what the vision for the organization is. Same thing with careers. Try to, try to stay close to the vision that you have for your career. All the variables, including where do you want to work? How do you want to live? How are you going to manage your time? The organization is the same thing. What kind of customer profile you want to go after? How many dollars are you trying to get per customer that calls you or spend per customer that calls you? Oh, was that vetted with the other side of the organization that is generating some of this work? You're transferring work from this part to this part. Have you thought about how much that is paid? Does that make sense just to free up capacity on your front lines? How are you having those conversations? And are you truly being a conduit for good information versus a barrier that just continuously silos an organization? So that's my tip. Ooh, that was good. That was so good. That was so good. Oh, Jay, you you got to be following me somewhere because I live. <laughs> Stay, staying curious is one of my tips always. I have a talk called um, the CEO mindset. And so the C stands for creating, but in order to create, right, you have to be curious because we're not just creating just to be creating. You have to always be curious and asking questions that not just for questions sake, but for really adding value and understanding, like you said, what is the goal of the organization? What is the vision? Who's the customer? Because when we think of, as employees, when we think of our 
um, job and our company that we work at as like our customer, then we want to know those things, right? Then we start to ask deeper and better questions. Like I treat, you know, I always treated when I worked inside of organizations, I always treated that company as if they were my customer. So that gave Mm -hmm. me a different perspective. There wasn't a job that was too small or too big. Even if it was outside of the scope of what I was getting paid for, it was like, this is my customer. And so I want to understand everything I can about this customer so I can sell more into this customer, which would mean what? Getting a promotion or serving them better, all, all the different things. And I think when we have that mindset um, as employees about our employer, then we start to look like you just said, we start to look across the organization, like who's the actual customer here? How does the company generate revenue? Um, how does my department or my role add value to the organization? How, you know, we start to ask those deeper questions. That's we right. start to think like a CEO, right? Uh, and so I think that's so key what you just, that was so, that was so good. That was so good. And I'll add one thing to this from a conversation I had with a coworker. Um, I said something to the extent it's much easier to stay curious, um, to stay humble if you're curious. It's much easier to stay humble if you're curious, because how aggressive can you be if you have true curiosity on the why? Once you understand the why something is moving or just as important, why is something not moving? You're that much closer to find the solution and the vehicle by which to get from point A to point B. So that is something that, you know, I teach my nephew who, you know, is, you know, growing a little bit, trying to find his college years. What am I going to do? Stay open and stay curious. You're, you are going to find your path, whether it's WFM or anything else, right? Stay on the driving seat and you can't be in the driving seat if you're not curious about all your surroundings. That's so good because curiosity makes you aware. Uh, this is such a great conversation. I got to bring you back for a, a repeat uh, interview because we can talk about this curiosity thing all day long because it is um, when I'm asked about and I get told that often. Oh, man, Juanita, you know, so you're so you're such a humble person. And I'm like, because I'm curious, you know, that's that's the core of it is because I'm I'm curious. I know that with everything that I know. Right. Uh, everything that I've experienced, I don't know enough, right? Everything I want is on the on the other side of what I don't know, right? And so if you know that everything you want is on the other side of what you don't know, you keep pushing those boundaries for what don't I know. You're always in discovery mode, which is why my absolute favorite thing to do is learn. Like that's my, I learn for fun. Correct. <laughs> you Hold know, on. so um, it's my absolute favorite thing to do. Is so I'm always in a curious mindset. Man, that was so so good. Thank you so so much, Jay. Um, where can people find you if they want to reach out to you and they want to connect with you? I believe that the easiest way for people to find me is through LinkedIn. I the LinkedIn I think is Jay Silva after the thing. So I think no space is just you know Jay Silva LinkedIn. I do answer my inbox probably once a week if I get it. So you know a little bit of a delay. But uh, definitely easy to find me there. At some point, hopefully, I'll get a little bit more of a platform. But right now, this is the way. And uh, I'm always happy to contribute, collaborate, you know, and learn as we've been talking about. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being my guest on this week's Tipsy Thursdays. You got it. Thank you so much. Man, was that so, so good. That was so good. I mean, Jay came in immediately dropping gems about, you know, like the shortest, um, shortest time to the right decision, you know, like with his background in um, uh, management consulting and uh, discovering workforce management and some of the characteristics that is required um, to make a good workforce management person around being curious. And one of the myths that workforce management is not just scheduling, right? That is a component. I'm not going to recap the whole show. Okay. Y'all got it. Y'all got it here first. It was so, so, so good. We got to bring Jay back. Don't we? I know. I know. Well, if you want to be a guest or if there's something that you want to talk about on this week, um, on one of our weekly tipsy Thursdays, don't hesitate to reach out. Y'all already know what to do until next time. Go be great and let's make impact. See y'all soon. Bye.